So, of course, I want to start by saying thank you, everyone, for joining. My name is Cody Armstrong, and of course, we're talking about Onshape's newly released sheet metal tools. So, I hope you're interested in sheet metal. We know a lot of users out there were interested in sheet metal for a long time. It was our most often requested feature. Uh, our top priority for a long time has been sheet metal. And we're really excited to show you a lot of the things that, that we've been working on. Now, as I always say with these webinars, I really encourage you to ask any questions that you'd like. What I'd like to do here is really give you a simple introduction into sheet metal, helping you get started. We're not going to get into, you know, in an hour's time, I'm going to cover as much detail as I can. But of course, you know, uh, covering all of it in great detail is just not possible in an hour. So I'm going to do my best. Feel free to ask any questions as we're going through this. And as I mentioned, I'm just going to cover as much info as I can in the time that we have. All right, so now the agenda is pretty straightforward. Um, of course, we're going to introduce you to sheet metal design. If you're new to sheet metal design, just a few simple rules that typically um, exist in sheet metal parts that you wouldn't normally see in a normal solid part, for example. So introduce you to sheet metal design, discuss where you'd use it. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are, are going to be very straightforward to you know, those that have a lot of experience in sheet metal. But if you're new to it, I'm going to give you just an intro, a brief intro into where you'd use it and why it's important. But then, of course, I want to show you how it's done in Onshape. We're going to focus on the ways that we can create sheet metal parts, the things that we can do with sheet metal parts, and how we interact with them. So all the details of using sheet metal parts, as much as I can cover in the hour we have, um, and using them in Onshape. Then I want to spend just a moment on the advantages of our approach versus others and some things that we've tried to do uh, in Onshape to, to make the sheet metal design and manufacturing experience a little bit more um, easier, a little bit simpler, right? Um, and then, of course, answer any questions that you have. So feel free to ask any questions. There's a questions dialog in the GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to ask any question, and I'll do my best to stop and address the questions from time to time. All right, so enough slides. Let's dig right into things. And so to start off, um, what is sheet metal design? I do have just a simple explanation. So one or two more slides, bear with me. But um, what is sheet metal design? You know, you're designing sheet metal parts, duh. You know, I think that's the, the obvious answer. You, you want to create parts that are made out of sheet metal. But there are a few rules that I think, you know, experienced sheet metal users are familiar with. You know, sheet metal has the same thickness. It's a uniform thickness. Uh, and it needs to unfold. And I think that's the big thing for users. It's not just designing a sheet metal part. Anyone can design a folded sheet metal part. It's the ability for that part to unfold and also for things to be factored in. A good example of this is K-factor. K-factor determines the amount of stretch that a part experiences when it's unfolding and therefore goes into the flat calculation, a very important part of sheet metal design. So when you create a bend, it of course stretches and the amount of stretch is determined by that K factor. So that's an important part of sheet metal design when we talk about CAD, uh, besides the, of course the need for it to have a uniform thickness and to unfold. But then we get into a lot of the things that make sheet metal design really nice. You know, the fact that I can define a default bin radius and not have to design around my bin radius, right? I can sketch straight lines and use them to define sheet metal parts. So default bin radius, default corner relief, default bin reliefs, and all these other settings that just make sheet metal part design very simple. So, you know, in short, if you've never done any kind of sheet metal design, you are creating sheet metal parts, of course, but the rules involved with sheet metal are generally uniform thickness, the ability to unfold, the ability to determine K factor, and then, of course, set all those default settings. So that is kind of a short, quick introduction into sheet metal design. Now, the example I have and the example we're going to work with today are very common examples, I think, for sheet metal design, you know, some kind of an enclosure housing of some sort, you know, where I'm, a, I'm designing this sheet metal case, essentially, around these components. One of the very common examples of sheet metal design. And the screenshots you'll see in the left kind of illustrate that. So that's one good example where you might use sheet metal design. Of course, there are many brackets and, you know, all kinds of things. It's a very inexpensive way to create parts. Um, but I think, you know, the examples we're going to walk through today really kind of driving home that enclosure scenario. All right. So moving on, let's get started with the actual tools we need to create sheet metal and on shape. Now, before we get into on shape, there are three things that I want to mention, the three ways to start a sheet metal part that are important. 
And the, the reason I wanted to start here is just to understand that you have a few options when you're getting started with sheet metal. So three ways. First, converting a solid. This is a very common workflow where maybe I've designed a solid body that reflects my enclosure, for example. And I can easily click that part and we'll convert it to a sheet metal part. So converting a solid is a very uh, common example. I'm going to show you an example of this in just a second. I think for a lot of users, though, the most common is extruding an open profile. And you'll see that in the screenshot here in the bottom left, where essentially I just sketch an open profile and extrude it like a normal extrude feature, except, of course, it will flatten. So you can extrude an open profile. And then finally, you can thicken a face. So if you just have a face that you want to thicken and then you know uh, convert to sheet metal, you can certainly do that. So three options. I'm going to show you an example of all three in just a second, so bear with me. But I do want to drive home. You will be choosing one of these techniques to start your sheet metal parts, one of these three options. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, as I mentioned before, I really want to keep the example simple. I'm going to walk you through building a simple enclosure for you know, some kind of electronics housing, for example. And so this example has you know, some power supplies, uh, an, an LCD, an emergency stop, and a fan, and an input for power. You know, it has all these miscellaneous pieces. And what I want to do is build or design this sheet metal housing around these pieces. And what I've done here is sketched a simple solid, you can see right here, sketch one and extrude one, that defines the shape that I want my housing to be. But this is just a simple solid part. You can see part one here. You may call it your master model. You may call it the envelope. There's a lot of names for it. But in general, I just want this part to drive my sheet metal part and reference it to, for creating my sheet metal parts in this example. So I've built this solid, and I'm ready to start converting it or creating my first sheet metal part. Right. So first things first, where do you find the sheet metal tools? you'll find them on the far right of the toolbar. So in the far right of the Part Studio toolbar, you'll find all of the sheet metal tools. I'm gonna to go through all of these or as much as I can in the time that we have, but you're going to start with sheet metal model. So when you're first creating a new sheet metal part, this is the command that you wanna start with. I mentioned before, there's actually three ways to start a sheet metal model. They're all inside of the sheet metal model command. So I click sheet metal model and you'll see convert, extrude, and thicken. As I mentioned before, those are your three techniques. Convert will convert a part, right? Extrude will extrude an open profile, and thicken thickens a face. So these are your three techniques, much like you know many things in Onship, we've tried to create the keep the interface simple and build a lot into an individual command. So this one sheet metal model command will do one of those three options that you have. Now we're going to start with a convert. So I'm going to click, this is the part that I want to convert. And what you'll see is it will go through and create a sheet for every one of the faces in this part that I've defined. So you can see there's a, now a sheet offset away from all the faces in this part studio. Now, of course, that's not how I'm going to design this. But by default, when I click on a part, automatically grabs all the faces and creates sheets for them. Now, it's easy for me to go in and say, well, these are the edges that I want to bend. So I'll click in edges to bend and then just define, you know, this is now a rip between two sheets, but it should be a bend. So I click the edge and it will convert it from a rip to a bend. All right. So now you can see that's now a bend and these two pieces are now one. Right. And I can keep going. I can go over to the next one. Click the next edge. That rip becomes a bend, and now these three, what was three independent pieces, are now one piece joined by two bends. Um, so just keep in mind, again, defining or converting it is just a matter of clicking on the part. It will grab all the faces, and then go through and define what it is that you want to convert to a bend. And it will grab everything together and put it into one sheet metal part. So for example, everything that's a different color, you can see these are different colors, are not a part of this sheet metal feature. And I want to add one more edge to this. So I'm going to come down here, click on this edge, and you'll notice as soon as I do that, I get a corner relief. Right? So I get a rip between the two, and I get automatically that corner 
that comes into play, corner relief that comes into play. So just realize that all of that calculation in terms of corner reliefs or bend reliefs um, is automatically done as you start to add more and more edges to your part. Now, if you reach a point where it will not flatten, you'll get an error, you'll get a message telling you so. Um, but otherwise, very simple to use. Click on the edges, all those are joined together to create a flat. Now, a few things about this command. First off, you have faces, faces to exclude. And that just means, as the name implies, ignore these faces in this command. So I can go through and click on those three faces of my, you know, my volume part, my master model, and just say ignore those for the sheet metal part. All right. Some other important settings. In the sheet metal model command, you have basically all of your default sheet metal settings. So I have my default sheet metal thickness, right? Radius, spin radius, K factor, minimal gap, default corner relief type, default bin relief type, and then the default scale for both of those. So just keep in mind all of your sheet metal settings for this and future features are established here, right? So if I go in and add flanges or add different you know, corner reliefs or start modifying things, it's going to revert back to these default values for future features. Now you can change it, I'm gonna show you that in a second, but it's important to establish what it is, you know, what default settings do I want? Establish those here, and you won't have to change them in future features. All right, so I have all of my settings established, right? I want to keep the input part. In this case, I converted a solid, but I don't wanna get rid of that solid. We're gonna use it later. So I'm gonna check keep input parts, and that's gonna bring back that first part that I used as my master or my envelope. I can hit the green check and now I have my first part right, in the first sheet metal part in my part studio. Right? Now as soon as you create a sheet metal part you'll notice a small change to the interface and that is the icon here for sheet metal table and flat view. This is one of the things that we have done quite a bit different than what you may have experienced in any other CAD application. So when you're working, you can continue to work in this model as I was just a moment ago, but at some point you're going to want to see the flat view, right? How do I see the flat pattern, so to speak? And that's the natural question when we talk about designing in sheet metal. The answer is this sheet metal table and flat view. If you click that icon, the sheet metal table in flat view flies out from the right, and as the name implies, you get a sheet metal table, and you get a flat view of your part, right? Now, just keep in mind, you know, as you know, we've shown before, everything in on shape is simultaneous, so if I click on an edge here, it highlights the edge in the folded model. It will also highlight the joint, right, in the table. If I click on an edge, here, for instance, it's going to tell me this is this edge in the part. You'll see it highlighted, right? So no matter if you select it in the folded, the flat, or the table view, it will highlight in all three. And we refer to this as simultaneous sheet metal because as you make changes to the folded model, you'll see the flat immediately update. If you make changes to the table, you'll see the flat and the folded automatically update. So you have the ability to really make manipulations and changes and see it in three different places. Okay, um, a few questions. Is sheet metal built as a feature script? It is certainly the core of sheet metal is a feature script, yes. And the core of everything in Onshape Part Studio is this feature script. Um, what if part one was external dimensions? I don't know that that would make a difference in this example. Um, you can offset to the inside. Forgive me if I misunderstand the question. Can we model the flat view? I mean, use it for a drawing. Yes. I'm going to go over that in just a moment. So, the, of course, you can take this and, and insert it into a drawing. I'm going to cover that in just a second. All right. So, again, the sheet metal table and flat view. And one of the big motivations behind creating this is we wanted to create a place where you could potentially edit bend radius information or end butt conditions for rips between joints in, 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 um, in, the, in the part studio. And we want to create a scenario where you can change that without having to dig through the feature list. And that's important because oftentimes, if I'm an engineer, I may not know 
what default bin radius would work for this uh, machine shop that I'm sending it to, let's say, right? So what I can do is hit share, and I can easily share with my machine shop, right? The neat thing is they can then come in and say, you know, this bin radius is too small, right? I can click on the bin. It highlights, hey, I can see that that's joint A. It highlights it in the table. It highlights it in the flat view, and I can double click, change the radius, and it updates in both places, right? So again, the big thing is you don't have to redesign the part if you're the sheet metal vendor just to change a bin radius, or you don't have to hunt through the feature list to find the flange in the feature list and edit the bin radius. You click on the bin, you double click the value and change it. So it means that you can work together collaboratively. Now, assuming I've given that user the permission, they can edit the bin radius, they can change a joint if they choose to, but most importantly, they can do things like tag it with a comment, right? I can right click a bin and say, you know, can I change this radius to 2.5, right? And so we can communicate right inside of the document and um, not have to do, you know, going back and forth. Um, I don't have to hunt through the feature list to modify it and they can make those changes without impacting my overall design intent, right? My, my sketches and features all remain intact. So we want to create a scenario where you have the sheet metal table, where you can make small changes to joints and bin radiuses, for example, and, you know, independent of the feature list. So you don't have to dig through that to find it, and you don't have to understand the design, design intent to do something as simple as change a bin radius. All right, so I see there are quite a few questions. Um, so I'm going to go through as many as I can, but forgive me if I run out of time. I want to get to as much as I can here today. I may save some of these questions for the end, so bear with me. Um, how do we add instructions for bending, automatic or manually? There's no tool today to add that. Um, it would be done probably at the drawing level uh, manually. Can I put the part table and flat on separate viewing screens? No, not as of today. Um, right now, they're all within that same window. Can you start a flat and then roll bend the flat into final shape? No. Right now, there's no way to define. You can start with a flat. I can start with a face and thicken it, of course. Um, but you cannot define like a line and say, bend around this line, for example. So you'd have to build it using flanges. You can start with a flat but you don't have the ability to sketch in geometry and bend around that, if that's the workflow you're looking for. Um, what if a part does not follow the sheet metal standards like large radii or open tubular part? Um, there's, no, there's no check to ensure that it follows any kind of standard. So there is still some work on the part of the engineer to understand the process. I think a big part of that too, um, you know, on shape sharing abilities, I can share it with someone, my machine shop or my sheet metal fab shop, and they can tag a bend and say, this bend is too large, right? Um, they don't have to reverse engineer the model. They don't have to ask you to make the design changes. They can tag it and even change it themselves. Um, could be, could this be used in foam, with foam board instead of sheet metal? If you forgive me. Um, I don't see a reason why not. Um... I think I'm going to move on here. We have quite a few questions. Forgive me, I'm going to continue on and then come back to them in just a bit. All right, so we've created our first sheet metal part, and I wanted to discuss the sheet metal flat view and the sheet metal table view. One other thing I wanted to mention about this that's particularly useful is as a fabricator, you can come in and decide, you know, the order of your bins. Um, and, and that's really useful if you call this up six months from now and you don't remember what order you bent it in, the on-shape model can restore that. It can reflect that, I should say. So I can move up and down bins in the bin table just by right-clicking them. Very useful, again, you know, as you remember, okay, I did it in this particular order. I can see that order in on-shape. I don't have to have it in some separate, um, piece of paper, window, whatever it may be. So again, just trying to store all, not just the engineering data, but the manufacturing data inside of the document here. All right, so I mentioned before, there are uh, three ways to create a sheet metal model. 
We can convert a solid, which is what we just did, but you can also thicken faces. And that's the next one I want to show you. So remember that we have this part that reflects our, you know, our envelope for our sheet metal part. And it's really easy for me to say, start a new sheet metal model. Again, I'm going back to that same command again. And we're going to start a new sheet metal model, this time using thicken, and then selecting the faces that I want to thicken. So here I'm just going to click on those three faces that we excluded in the past feature because they were in a separate part. Right? And now it's easy for me to create a separate sheet metal part within the same one part studio. I hit the green check OK. And now I have a sheet metal part. All right, so let's hide the other parts here. Sheet metal part created solely by thickening faces. And it could be faces, it could be surfaces, or you know, anything that defines a face and on shape can be used to create a sheet metal model. And then again, all I did was define these are the edges that I want to create bends. You know, the edges where those faces are joined. So it's very easy to grab a face and thicken it and convert it into sheet metal. Now, at this point, what I'd like to point out, first off, we now have two sheet metal parts, right? So as I go back to the table view, I'm seeing the first one, but I can switch in the drop down here. So now I have sheet metal model two, and there is the flat for sheet metal model two and the bin table information. So just keep in mind, you can have as many sheet metal models within a single part studio as you'd like. It's one of the benefits of working with Onshape, the ability to model together. And um, it's easy for me to switch back and forth between each of the flats. Okay. All right, so the next thing I want to mention, we've created two sheet metal parts, we've converted a solid, and we've thickened faces. The next thing I want to illustrate is that you can use the normal extrude remove boolean commands that you're used to right so if i want to create cuts let's create a cut in this top sheet metal panel for the lcd and for the emergency stop right i can just do a simple boolean subtract and just subtract the tools from the target and this is no different than a boolean subtract of a solid model right so again just driving home i'm using those same commands that are used for solid model parts and I'm using them for sheet metal. And I mentioned before, you get simultaneous views of everything. The moment I created this Boolean, I haven't even accepted it yet, you'll see that flat pattern is automatically updated to accommodate for that cut, right, for that Boolean. So I hit the green check OK, and now I've created the cuts for the LCD panel and the emergency stop, just using a simple Boolean subtract. Same goes, by the way, for something like an extrude remove, right? So here I've got a few sketches on the back of this panel, one for the vent fan, one for the outlet um, for the power, and I can just use extrude remove, right? And choose the merge scope, which is this bottom part. And we'll go back to our first part here. We'll flip direction of the extrude. And what you'll see is the moment, of course, that the cut is added in the folded model. You see that flat pattern update to accommodate for that new cut as well. All right. So I hit the green check, and there we are. Our simple extrude remove, no different than extrude remove on a solid part that you've no doubtly done many, many times. So same commands, you're using the same buttons to create those types of features. But it's important to point out you can't add, right? So Onshape knows that this is a sheet metal part. If I were to try and extrude a boss into it, for example, it's going to tell me that you can't, right? Um, now, also point out, when you do a cut across a bend, for example, uh, it will refer to it as a normal cut, right? It, what's often referred to as normal cut. So let me give you an example of this. Let's sketch, let's say that I needed to cut a corner out of this, um, maybe to let wires pass through, for example, right? So I select, let's sketch a few rectangles, add a few constraints, let's say 15 and 15, okay? And we'll just do a normal extrude remove, but of course the big thing here is this is going to cut across the bend. You know? And as you can see, no issues with cutting across the bend, and I can see it update. 
right? So I can see the difference in the flat. Let's do depth of 15. You can see the flat update. You'll see the folded model update, right? So simple cuts across the bend, no issue. Um, it's easy to go through and define, you know, what part or parts that you want to cut this with. And again, one of the benefits of Onshape, I can model multiple parts together, and I could even cut multiple sheet metal parts together if I chose to. Right? So simple cuts across the bend, no issue. Um, now, the next thing that I wanted to mention is the ability to edit the the information in the bin table. And I've mentioned the um, sheet metal table and editing the bin radius. But one other thing I always like to mention here is you can also edit things like the actual joints, right? So let's say, for instance, that I don't want an edge joint between these two. I can see, you know, that is joint E. It highlights in the graphics, and I can change that to a different butt joint style, right? I have two different options. So this is another example where I'm changing that you know, rip condition totally independent of the feature that created it. And all the information is being pushed back to the feature if I were to go and edit that later. But just keep in mind you have the ability to edit that joint condition independently just by clicking on the joint, selecting it in the table, and then hitting the drop down and choosing a different, a different rip style, right? All right, so that is editing or modifying a joint. I'm going to show you how in a second where we can make joints between two features that may be unrelated. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Now, I've mentioned two techniques for creating sheet metal parts. We've thickened faces and we've converted a solid. The third technique, the last one that I want to mention, is extruding an open profile. And I think for a lot of users, this is the most familiar technique, especially if you've come from something like a SolidWorks, where this is a very common workflow. So I'm going to show you an example of this. And to do that, we're going to model a simple case, or a simple mount, I should say, for this power supply. So we're going to hide some of these parts. And let's start a sketch on the front plane and start sketching. Now, as I mentioned before, this is very much um, a typical workflow in other CAD systems where you're just sketching open contours, not closed shapes. And the geometry um, you can reference just like any other sketch. Right? So you don't have to do any special techniques. Let's add a few dimensions here and start to define this. But in the end, any open profile um, you can take and extrude. One more dimension from here to here. Let's give that the sheet metal thickness. And now the last thing I want to do is define the depth of this line. The easiest way to do that is just to attach it to the edge of the part. Right? So let's bring back the part. Right? And I'll just constrain line to face with coincident. Right? All right, so now I've got my open profile. Let's go back to the sketch here. All it is is, of course, one, two, three, four lines. And I want to take these four lines and extrude them and create a sheet metal part out of it. So I'm going to click the green check. Go back to sheet metal model. Okay, again, every time you create a new sheet metal part, you're going to click sheet metal model. Now, in this case, we can choose extrude then click on the sketch curves that we want to extrude. In this case, it's easy just to click the entire sketch from the actual feature list. Um, but you can click on individual pieces of the sketch if you choose to. Uh, but there's our sheet metal part, right? So let's set an end condition. We'll say symmetric, um, maybe a depth of 90 millimeters. And then I can establish all those settings that I, I mentioned earlier, thickness, bin radius, K factor, minimal gap, default corner and bin relief options. Okay, But I hit the green check. Oh, one last thing before I accept. It's important to keep in mind one additional thing that you don't have in the other options is the ability to flip where the sheet metal is relative to your part. So there is an opposite direction. Just keep that in mind um, in that 
extrude. That's an, a particularly important one when you're sketching open profiles like this. All right, so I hit the green check OK, and now I have my sheet metal base for this power supply. Let's go ahead and hide the other parts, All right? And we'll just focus on this flange for a moment. Now, there are a few things that I want to illustrate here. First off, of course, now we have three sheet metal models in this one part studio. We've covered all three techniques to create a sheet metal part. And you can see now I have sheet metal model three, and there's the flat for it and the bin information. Now, I want to continue working with this model, and I want to add a few more features to it. And one of the questions that I often get asked is, well, what about flanges? You know, naturally, if we have a sheet metal part, we need to start adding things to it. And we've discussed the three ways to create a sheet metal part, but we haven't discussed how to add to them, and in particular, add flanges. So real simple, under the sheet metal toolbar, we have a command for flange. Now, you can click on an edge of the part, and it doesn't matter if it's the inside or the outside edge that's not um, specific. But you click an edge, and you get a flange. You can see there's my flange. A few options with a flange. Of course, we can reverse direction, opposite direction, right, so that it goes up instead of down. We can set a bend angle. If we don't want 90 degrees, we can set it to something else. And we have distance. Now, you have a typical bl blind in condition, which we're all familiar with, you set a distance and that's the amount. But you can also say things like up to entity and I could click on a point you know, of the sheet metal part and say extend the flange up to this point. Right? So you have some in type options, you also have in type with offset, another valuable one in sheet metal design. In this example we're just going to keep it simple, blind depth 15 millimeters for our flange. Now one more thing I want to stress here is the alignment. You can see the alignment in mine is set to inner flange alignment. And that means the inner edge of the flange is aligned to the thing that I clicked on. But I can establish a different flange alignment. Now, the, the one that I think is most popular is going to be outer, uh, inner or outer, I should say. And outer means the outer edge of the flange is right at the edge that you clicked on. So essentially you're defining where that bend is with relationship to the boundary of your sheet metal part, right, of the edge that you're clicking on. But you can establish that. You also have a middle option, like the name implies, it splits the difference, right? So it gives you something that's centered over um, whatever you're referencing. So just keep in mind you have flange alignment options when you're using a flange, and you can define whether it's inner or outer or middle. Last thing that I want to mention with the flange command is that if you add more than one edge and they have any kind of miter potential, it will automatically miter them, right? So there's a checkbox in the flange command for automatic miter. Like the name implies here, I'm adding two flanges and I expect to get that you know, 45 degree miter between the two automatically. I just wanna point that out. You can continue clicking on edges the flanges will continue to be created and you'll get that automatic miter when you have scenarios like this. Now, the other thing I want to mention, um, of course, everything's live updating. I think I've stressed that enough now. So when I make a change to the folded, you can see that update live. Another neat thing I always like to mention is you can also click on edges of the folded and it will add the feature, or excuse me, you can click on edges of the flat and it will add the feature to the folded, right? So I can click on this edge of the, the flat model and you'll see it update and add a flange to the folded, right? So you can click on edges or faces of the flat and reference them to create new features uh, like I've done here. So just a tip, again, trying to drive home, it doesn't really matter where you work. Um, and this is going to, to change too. We're gonna add a lot more functionality where you can work in the flat and so on. Um, but just like to point out, you can click on faces, you can click on edges of the flat and reference them for creating new features like this flange. All right, so I hit the green check, and now we have the flanges on our power supply mount. Now, a question often gets asked then, well, what if we wanted, um, you know, what if I don't want a flange that goes all the way along the edge? You know, I only want a flange that's X, you know, uh, distance from the edge, for example. It's important to point out Onshape knows that this is a sheet metal part, and you can use a lot of the common commands you may have used in other places to manipulate the model. So, for example, move face is a good example where I can grab the face of a flange, drag it, 
and Anshi will recognize that I'm dragging the edge of a flange and automatically add the bin relief that I need. So let me give you an example. I want to grab this flange and the other side, this one right here, and I want to drag them back this direction, right? Now, as I do this, what you'll notice is as I grab and drag, Onshape will automatically accommodate for the move face by adding the bin relief. All right, so I didn't go in and specify I need a bin relief. This is the same move face command that you would use for any Onshape features. It just Onshape recognizes that you're doing a move face on a sheet metal part and that a bin relief in this situation would be necessary. All right. Okay, so just keep in mind, you know, simple things like modifications of the flanges and stuff like that. Just grab the face and drag it. Uh, Onshape will find that this is a sheet metal part, add the necessary bin reliefs or corner reliefs um, to accommodate for it, right? So let's do the offset. Let's say I wanted a 35 millimeter offset from the edge, and I can hit the green check, okay? So that's using move face to manipulate uh, an individual flange, for example. Now, another example I always like to mention is, well, what if I wanted to change one of the bin reliefs? Or what if I wanted to change one of the corner reliefs? I've shown you earlier how you can establish the defaults. But what if you wanted to change, let's say, this corner to something else, you know, some other type of relief, or maybe just exaggerate the relief that's there? You can do that by choosing the corner command, right? So I can click corner, click on a face associated with a corner relief, and then choose a different relief type, right? Now, you can see rectangle here, and if I zoom in on the flat, you can see again, flat is live updating, and I can choose something else. Let's say I want a round corner relief for just this one corner, right? You can see again, updates in the flat, updates in the folded. I can change my scale, maybe that's a little too big. Right? Change that scale down some, and again, you'll see an update. But changing an individual corner, very simple. Click the corner command, click on a face of that corner relief, and you'll see you can change it to any of the other corner relief types. Okay. Now, keep in mind, when you change a corner like this, it's a feature in your feature list. So when I did the move face or I created the flange, those are no different than an extrude revolve, sweep, cut, they're listed just like those. So if I don't, if I later decide, you know what, that shouldn't be that way, I can just delete the feature just like it were any other feature, right? Uh, another example is a bin relief. Let's say that I want to change a bin relief. There's a bin relief command, and I can come in and select an edge of the bin relief that I want to change, right? By default, it's a brown. Let's zoom out a bit here. But I can change that. So I can say, you know what, let's change this to rectangle. And you can see now it's a rectangular bin relief. I can hit the green check, and now I've changed just that one bin relief. Remember, we created two bin reliefs with that move face, one on this side, one on this side, but I'm changing just this one. And the main thing I want to illustrate is you have that independent control over release, even if they're all created in the same feature. Right? All right, so... That is the bin relief. Again, you're modifying individual bins, individual corners that you may want to change outside of you know that default list that I showed you when you first started the sheet metal part. Right? All right, so the next thing that I wanted to mention here is the make joint command. So there may be scenarios where you have two edges that are unrelated, maybe different features created them. So let's create like a flange on the edge here. And I want to flange in, and I want this flange to line up with the part. So let's go the opposite direction, and let's say distance of 15. Now, what I have is essentially a flange here and a flange here created in two different features. And I want to ensure that the joint between these two is clean. Right? right now I have this large gap because of the corner relief that I've defined. And what I want to do is extend just this piece so that it matches, so that I have a nice clean lineup between the two. That's a scenario where, again, two different features, I need to create a joint between them. Right? So I make joint, click on two edges of the two different features, and it creates a joint out of them. 
right? So we'll extend in this example, this is a simple rip. It extends one to meet up with the other in a rip joint condition. But I can also define different butt joints. And the neat thing is this will automatically modify not just my tab, but also the surrounding geometry. Here it's extending the face of the part to line up with that joint. And I have two different butt conditions. I can extend my joint out over the sheet metal part. So again, just driving home, if you have one of those scenarios where you have two edges and you want to join them together, maybe you're trying to weld them together and they're two different features, you may need to make a joint, click on the two edges of the two different features and give your specific joint condition, whether you want an edge joint or a butt joint. Um, but again, you know, doesn't have to be related two different features, click on edges um, from two different commands and, and make a joint out of them. So I hit the green check and there is my simple make joint. All right, so we've covered the three ways that we have for creating sheet metal parts, convert, thicken, and extrude. We've covered the sheet metal table, the bin table, all that information as well as the flat view. Um, and what I'd like to do next is discuss those scenarios where you may have a situation where, um, you know, what if it's not affected by the flat? Or what if I want to extrude or add my standoffs to the sheet metal part? Or I want to weld a gusset into the corner of a sheet metal part or something like that, where it's an operation that would typically be done after the flat pattern is cut, right? Um, and in those situations, we have a command specifically for this. And it, it really ties in... Um, to our multi-part modeling and really gives you a lot of extra capabilities here. So let's bring back all of our parts. We'll hide the flat view here. And what I want to do is I want to create a simple standoff or a series of standoffs in this sheet metal housing. So this is our first sheet metal part, right? Our very first one. And if you look, it's meant to house these circuit boards. And these circuit boards are going to be mounted on standoffs that will be welded to this sheet metal part. So the, the issue is, well, if I add an extrude, obviously that's not going to be incorporated into the flatten. And if you have other CAD systems, you may be um, familiar with the idea that you can't do that unless you explicitly define it as not being sheet metal. And Onshape has a very similar approach. What we have in Onshape is the ability to finish a sheet metal model, right? The reason this is important, if I click finish, I say this is the part that I want to finish, just our first sheet metal part here. Now I can do anything that I want to this part and it doesn't impact the flat. The reason that's so big is you may want to weld in gussets or standoffs or whatever the situation is and you don't want any of that being incorporated into the flat pattern. Now anything that I do is ignored by that flat, right? So now I'm sketching on the face of the sheet metal part. I can do normal offsets, extrudes, um, really anything that I want, and it's ignored when I go to create or when I go to view that flat later. So bear with me for a second here. I'm going to sketch a few simple circles with some offsets. All right. And what we'll do is extrude these. One big benefit to multi-part modeling, of course, is that I can reference the face, right? So let's bring back that part. We'll say extrude. I want to extrude that sketch up to the face of the circuit board. So we're just going to use up to face. We'll say up to right there, right? Then we can say this is going to be added so let's say add, and we're going to add this to the sheet metal part, which is part 53. Now, this is the step that would fail if you did not finish the sheet metal model. And that's an important thing to point out. If you try and do certain operations on sheet metal parts, like add and extrude, before you finished, you will not be able, it will fail. Uh, the feature itself will fail. Okay? So just keep in mind, you can't add to with you know extrude remove or extrude features um, in the in the model before you finished it, and the reason for that is, of course, these are standoffs. Let's hide the other parts here, right? So there's my sheet metal part with the standoffs in it. These standoffs are welded in after the part is cut, right? So 
Now when I go back, the main thing I want to illustrate here, let's go back to Sheet Metal Model 1. You do not see those extrude features in the flat view in Onshape. Right? So again, just driving home, finish Sheet Metal. If you do that feature, you'll, you'll see it listed in your feature list. You can do anything you want to the Sheet Metal part after that. And it will behave just like any other regular solid part. Right? But anything after that is ignored by the Sheet Metal feature. Okay, so that is the purpose of finished sheet metal. You may need it, you may not. You know, if you have sheet metal parts that don't have any kind of features um, that would be considered, you know, post-processing, welding in types of things, you may not use that. But if you have a situation like this where you may need to weld in something after the part is bent or the, after the part is cut, finished sheet metal is what you'll need. Right? Now, there are a few limitations. One of the more common ones that I get asked quite often, it's something that we're actively working on, is a command like fillet. Um, you cannot currently fillet a corner like this unless it's the sheet metal part is finished. And that's something we're working on. But I do recommend one thing that you can do is create an extrude remove. And I can create a cut to accomplish that. Um, so there are a few limitations. Realize that, you know, also another question that's often commonly asked is what about um, rolled parts, uh, drawn parts, those kinds of things. Um, Right now, the initial set of tools is really focused around parts you would make on a press break. Um, so unrolling parts and those kinds of things, um, you know, still limitations. But keep in mind that, that we're working on it. So that is the basics. Last thing, and it's really the last step of, of most sheet metal parts, is I need to now take this and make a drawing out of it and export as DXF or whatever those types of steps may be. Um, it's real simple to do. In the flat view, you right click and you'll see an option to create drawing of flat pattern of part 53. You choose your template, no different. This is the same dialog you'd get for creating a new drawing and you're off and running. Um, you can then drop in your flat view, add your dimensions, you know, export to DXF, whatever it is that you're trying to do. But again, just driving home, right click the flat view um, to see it in the list, to see the create drawing option. I should say, okay. You can left click and then go in and start to lay out all of my dimensions, right? So I can lay out ordinate dimensions if I care to. It's all you know up to me how I choose to lay out my dimensions, but I think you get the idea. Um, right click the flat view and you'll see the option to create drawing of whatever that part number may be. All right, so that is what I intended to cover. I know there are a lot of questions, so I, I try to leave myself enough time to get to as many questions as I can. I have 12 minutes uh, to answer them. If you have an outstanding question, please stick around. I'm going to make sure to... Um, answer as many of them as I can in the time that we have. I do have one final question for the audience. So if you could bear with me for just a moment. Um, if you're interested in a private demo or discussion from one of our account managers, um, let us know. We can reach out to you and talk to you more specifically about how Onshape applies to what you're doing every day. So if you're interested in a private demo or discussion with one of our account managers, um, getting into more detail on, on your application, how Onshape might fit, let us know. Um, I'm going to stick around and answer any questions. I know there are a long list of questions there, and I'm going to make sure to get to all of them. So um, bear with me. Stick around if you have any questions. Um, I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming. Ah, one last thing before I forget. I almost forgot. I've already mentioned these, but I just want to recap real quickly. Um, the advantages that Onshape offers when we talk about flat patterns. Uh, first off, you have the ability to see the folded flat and tabular views or table views in real time simultaneously. So we're not unsuppressing or suppressing or turning on and off a feature. It's You see it at all times and it live updates. Um, so that's one big advantage to Onshape. You see the flat at all times, um, anywhere, right? So folded flat and tabular views available real time simultaneously. Also, it means the manufacturing info and the design intent are two different things, two separate things. And one can be edited without hurting the other. 
And I think that's a big part of it, especially if you actually share with a fabrication shop and they like to make maybe bin radius changes or give you feedback on the design. Onshape really works well in that type of scenario. Again, because it means you can change a bin radius or a rip style without finding the feature or understanding the design intent. I don't have to dig through the feature list. So these are just a few things I like to mention. I think the big thing, again, is just the fact that you can see everything and it's live and in real time. Now, a few tips. I have already mentioned one. Right-click the fat, flat view to create a drawing. Um, and, of course, the, the second one I've already mentioned again. Make sure to finish the sheet metal to add things that do not need to be in the flat pattern. So, you know, gussets, you know, standoffs, any of those types of things where you, you add them later after the part is cut. Do a finish sheet metal, and then you can model all those things in just as if it were a normal part. Right. But if you try to do that before doing finished sheet metal, you'll run into errors if you try and add material to a sheet metal part because, again, it has to follow those rules of being uniform and being able to unfold. All right, so I know there are a lot of questions. I'm going to stick around and make sure I get to all of them, so bear with me. Um, I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming. If you have an outstanding question, stick around. Otherwise, have a good day.